Hey Valley Church, uh, it's an honor for me to be able to share with you again uh, the devotion. I apologize if the video quality is not that great. Um, yeah, struggled with different laptops and things to, to get the best one, but um, this uh, hopefully will do. Yeah, um, pray that this finds everyone well. Um, it's a beautiful day in Cape Town. I try to do the video out at the chickens because I wanted to show you how they're doing. A lot of you have been asking um, about our chickens, but it's amazing. We Each of them give us an egg a day. So um, we've got our vegetables going and um, yeah, it's, it's fun. Also very thankful to be starting with camps soon. Next week will be our first um, camp after months. It was in February it was the last time we did a camp beyond Apostle Battery. So we really praise God, uh, even though it will just be a group of 20 and we will have to adjust quite a lot when it comes to uh, social distance and activities. But uh, we are, are just thankful to do that. We've also been just back up in an IY on a weekly base. Um, and some of our ministries have started again. Um, in a different way, but we are thankful that we that we can um, connect with people. Uh, yeah, so my devotion today is around this idea of, of legacy and um, what type of legacy uh, do we want to leave? Now, um, you know, a while ago, Minun and I met with a gentleman from a company called Legacy Will, and it was around, you know, updating a will and um, talking about just money and assets and all of those adult things, um, which is fun. Uh, and then in March of this year, I went to a leadership summit where I go to every year with uh, friends from all over the world. And um, I did a similar exercise, but this time it was around a spiritual legacy, just taking time to to look at my own life and what what do I want to leave behind as a spiritual heritage. Um, and uh, this is always a good exercise for me to go through because it makes one think. It makes you stop and um, and just reflect again. What is What are those most important things? Uh, what am I living for? In this, you know, world today, I think we take a lot of time on the first type of legacy, which I, I, I mentioned, uh, what, um, what are we going to leave behind physically? Uh, and although those things are important, we need to think of that, you know, for, for our families and, and so forth. Uh, it is just sad that such little time was spent on, on the other more important things, such as um, a spiritual legacy. In the Bible, we read about treasures being stored up in heaven. Um, we should do that and not store up treasure on earth where moth and rust um, and corona can, can destroy it as it has for, for many people. And so today I want to I talk about what, what is that spiritual, that, that eternal legacy? Um, what does that look like? I think this year has been a year where we were all shaken um, in a good way. It was not pleasant. It was not fun. Um, but I know it was good. Uh, the smartest, you know, richest uh, people, most important people um, really struggled and couldn't control this whole COVID pandemic because no one knew how to predict. No one knew you know, medical research tried to, to find a cure. And um, and that left us in a very difficult spot where we're out of control. And let's be honest, we don't like that. Uh, where money couldn't control this this outbreak. And we could do whatever we, we could, can, and we, we did, but um, realized that this thing is, is out of control. This is out of our hands. We can only do so much. To, to prevent it spread. And so at some stage, all of us had a, 
I'm sure we had a moment of feeling out of control. I can't control my schedule. I don't know how to plan. Kids, school, um, my business. You know, when are those levels going to, uh, when are we going to go back to, to level two, level one? Um, we were just out of control. Didn't know how to plan. Even the whole idea of how can I, how can I think about health? You know, we realized we, we can't control our health, um, our our economy, our, our finances, our loved ones, and that that left us, especially those that didn't don't have God, um, left us feeling insecure um, and uncertain and scared. And so, you know, this whole idea of we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. That's actually a, a biblical idea that throughout scripture, uh, we're reminded to that our life is short and that we should make the most of today. And this is what I've been reflecting on during lockdown is just what am I, what am I doing today? Uh, Forget about tomorrow. What are those opportunities that God, God placed in front of me today? And throughout scripture, we read about how short life is. Just, um, you know, James, we all know James and how straightforward he is. This is what he, he said. Um, you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Our lives on earth, it's like a, a mist. It just evaporates, it disappears. The psalmist, uh, David, yeah, I want to quote a few of his lines. And we know if, if any of us want to leave a legacy um, of faith, that's a guy we can look at. David was not perfect. He, um, he had a lot of shortcomings, but he's the only guy where we read this about his legacy, that it was a man after God's own heart. Wouldn't you want to be remembered like that? And here are a few things that he said. You know, our life is like a breath. It's like a passing shadow. Psalm 144. Psalm 90 says, Number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Number. Number your days. In other words, take into account. Focus. Don't just take it for granted. Number your days every day. He said 102, uh, our lives wither like grass. Lord, make me know my end and what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting I am. That's Psalm 39. And then just the next verse in 39. You have made my days a few hand breaths and my lifetime is as nothing before you it's as nothing before you surely all mankind um, stand as a mere breath a mere breath so this this whole thinking of you know what is our life it's it's so short um it kind of reaches climax two weeks ago when my dad phoned me, um, I think it was 11 o'clock at night, and he shared with me that his best friend uh, just suddenly passed away. Um, Quintus was um, in the Eastern Cape um, on holiday when he just had a sudden heart attack uh, out of the blue. Nothing uh, predicted it. There was just nothing wrong um, with him. He was 63 years old. He was healthy. And... Um, this really shook us all. Um, Quintus, I can remember, he taught me how to shoot um, with a pistol. He invested. He was a, a mentor uh, as the regional director for Point Man Leadership Institute, which is one of our biggest partners. He, he opened a lot of doors for me, for us as CHAM in Africa to do training. I've been with him um, on many camps and outreaches um, one recently in Malawi, where we just had such a, just a ball. I mean, Quintus was really a, 
a guy who was full of jokes and always um, ready to, yeah, just make you laugh. Quintus wasn't just an amazing man of God and, and served um, all over the world. He also had a lot of hobbies and interests um, from baking bread uh, at a stage, he got into, into coffee. I think he did a barista course. Uh, he did a knife course where he started making knives with, um, you know, I sent him some bones from, you know, different wild animals um, that I've collected and, and like warthog tusks, and he made beautiful knives out of it. Um, he got into, um, into trees. He, he was such an expert with trees and with plants. Like he was just... He enjoyed life um, and he made the most of it. And um, I look at him and I and I have such pleasant memories of a life well lived. A life that was not perfect, but um, a life that portrayed Jesus and his character in, in every facet um, of, his, of his being, of his life. And so on Friday, they had the memorial service and... Um, 50 people gathered in Pretoria in his home um, home church where in a very social distant way. And when I looked at it, because it was live stream, because literally people from all over the world, um, you know, could watched it. Um, I just felt a little bit sad because um, everyone sat so, you know, they were so scattered in that building. And uh, if it was in any, like in the normal days, there would have been a huge celebration of appointment um, members and CPA, the Christian Police Association, which um, he also served as president for a while. They would have sang um, Malibongwe and it would have been a big party to celebrate. And as much as I would, would have wanted that, um, I knew that Quintus, um, he wouldn't have cared about that because he was just concerned about about Jesus and the legacy of faith um, that he would want it to be uh, continued and people to to remember. And so I um, I want to read you a few words from Quintus, which he um, wrote, and um, his daughter posted this on Facebook. The day I die. I will be remembered for who I was and not for what I did. Legacy lies not in greatness of deeds, but in purest, pureness of character. It's not the deed of kindness or the word of truth that will define me, but the strength and endurance of my character. The who I really am when nobody is watching. I think it's just so spot on when it when it comes to the the words idea of of legacy and what counts that it's about it's about character it's not about what we do uh, but it's about who we are and in this world where everything is about you know my my physical legacy and and you know tangible things um, we know in the kingdom economy it's about those treasures in heaven. Um, it's about who who we are, who we have become um, during our time on earth. Have we every day looked more and more like Jesus or have we just pursued um, everything that's meaningful in this world? Um, and so in, uh, in the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon, um, you know, the wisest guy, um, and we know about his story, how he, he asked for wisdom. Um, he kind of reflected in these 12 chapters on, on life. It's sort of a, a reflection on, on everything he did. Um, and those of you that know the book of Ecclesiastes, you know that you need to read the last few verses in order to understand what this book really is about. Otherwise, you will just become depressed because literally the whole book is about to summarize everything is meaningless everything on earth and solomon was really um he really tried everything and he, he explains it quite in detail 
um, in this in this letter and the New Living Translation Study Bible um, says it like this. Solomon wrote this letter uh, to spare the future generations the bitterness of learning through their own experience that life is meaningless. And those future generations, that's that's us. Um, and uh, looking back on his life, he concluded that everything is meaningless apart from God. Uh, and so I want to pause at those last few verses um, and just read it for us. I'm going to take it from verse 13. The end of the matter is this. All has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. So this wise, wisest man um, that mankind possibly have, has ever seen, he has tested everything um, and concluded that the only thing that, that matters, um, the whole duty of man is this, fear God and keep his commandments. I like the verse just before that, verse 11, he said, I mean verse 12, he said, My son, beware of anything beyond these. Making many books, there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. You know, not that that studying is, is bad and, and being, you know, reading a lot and knowing what's going on, that's... Um, that in itself is not a bad thing. But in a way, if you if you study a bit deeper, and I read some commentary on that, um, basically just saying there, you know, <laughs> all the philosophies and opinions and debates and all of this um, can just become so distracting from the, the wisdom that is found in God's word. That's why it says fear God and keep his commandments, because this is this is the whole duty of man. Don't become distracted with you know, endless uh, speculations and, you know, philosophies and, no, I've come back to the basics. Fear God. Now, what, is, what does that mean, to fear God, to, to respect Him as the ultimate authority, um, the one that holds the universe in the palms of His hands, that He is in the seat of, of the King. He is the King. I am not. And there is a very... Big gap between me and him. Yes, he, he relates to us as a father and he wants to, to be in relationship, but I am not God. He is the, the name above every name. He is a scary God. We read in uh, Isaiah uh, 40 that he holds the universe in the span of his hand. Um, he is very, very, very big and we need to, to honor him um, as the sustainer. Um, as the one who controls everything, you know, the, the economies, the, um, the whole universe. And then we need to fear him and we need to, to keep his commandments. It's as clear as that. And we want to make it about so many other things. But at the end of the day, this is the whole duty of man. In verse 14, it says, if we will bring... Um, every deed into judgment with every secret thing whether good or evil in my own life i know um, that many times you know this pressure of of what are they or what the crowd and what is accepted you know when we started having kids uh we just realized man how you know how much pressure there is just to you know you need to have this and the best this and that and that um but looking at at god's word looking at um just the principles of of parenting you know i don't i don't see that 
and um, God's ways are so much different. And if I'm going to be so set on, um, you know, the expectations and how it's done in the culture, how will I ever be able to to really build a legacy that has got e eternal, um, I'm talking about generational um, impact. And so Solomon really nails it on the head where he said, this, you know, at the end of the day, this is all that matters. Um, and those last words, you know, every deed will, will be brought into judgment. Every secret thing, whether good or evil, and God knows why we are doing things. God knows our motivations. Um, and so I've got a, a few more uh, words that I want to read from um, Quintus's uh, blog, um, which, which I just love. It's not what I can consume, but what I leave behind, which is significant. Achievement is not what I manage to collect for myself, but what I can provide as a result of my efforts. At the end of it all, the true test will be what impact I had on my social environment and on the world in general. He says, a parasitic attitude of selfish acquiring drains the pool of sharing. Consumerism depletes the resources that were meant for the general good for all. Before you can even start to ask the question, what is my purpose in life? You need to make it out for yourself, what you want to leave behind. A decision about one's own legacy provides a focus on your ambition. Then, every aspect of life becomes a driver towards meaningfulness. A suitable starting point would be to formulate a legacy will towards which one can live purposefully. So what is the, the legacy that you want to leave behind? You know, there's this deep theological idea called YOLO. I'm just missing. Um, maybe the older generation might not know what that stands for. It's quite popular um, just among the, the youth and the millennials, but it's this idea of you only live once. Now, my previous devotion I did was on um, Unhurry by uh, John Mark Comer. And John actually, in his book, he, he talks about YOLO and he actually tries to you know, he paints a bad picture of, of the, the concept and tries to get it out, out of the church. Uh, now, before you think I contradict myself, um, you know, John Mark Comer said, you know, we shouldn't buy into this idea of YOLO, um, where we try to just fill our lives. And at the end of the day, just being burnt, you know, on, on both ends of the candle and being, you know, unhealthy, overcommitted, just running at an unsustainable pace. That's not what I'm talking about um, in this message. I'm not suggesting just because life is so short, we should do as much as possible and overload and not have any margin. That's not that's not what I'm saying. Uh, that would be going against just you know the life of Jesus and how he, uh, yeah, you know, the example he left us. What I'm referring to is to be so sure about. What is the legacy that I want to leave uh, for eternal, to have eternal significance? And then to to fear God and, and obey His commands. What is it that God is calling me to? Um, you know, who am I becoming? And focusing our attention on that. So that we don't do a lot of things. Um, but through the things that God brings across our path, um, what He's calling us to. To make an impact through our character every day to become more and more like him. So my prayer for us as I um, conclude this is that we will not try to, to fit in. Um, as we are back in level two and maybe one of these days again level one. And everyone is so frantic and, and, and you know busy and getting back into everything. Let us set our sights on, on the kingdom on a legacy of faith, a legacy that equals one word, and that's Jesus. Um, so that, you know, one day, like with Quintus, 
on his funeral on on on, on Friday, people can say that we we remember Jesus, because um, Jesus what what is what was most important um, in my life. So um, let me pray for us. God remind us that our lives on earth is so short, and that we shouldn't make ourselves comfortable here. Help us to set our sights on, on, on heaven, Lord. Um, may we gather treasures there, Lord, in the lives of, of people through our, our character, our Christ-like character. Help us to not fall into the trap uh, of this culture, Lord, where everything is about yeah how much we have in our, our bank, Lord, our, our assets, our security. Um, Lord, although those things do have um, a place and have value, Lord, help us not to, to make that the most important thing. Help us to fix our eyes on you and what is important in the kingdom. Lord, what is important in the lives of people. Jesus, may our legacy be all about you. May we make your name great and not worry so much about our names being remembered. Yeah, commit everyone that's listening and those that are not listening to you uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your time. Uh, I pray that this message meant something to you. Uh, take Ecclesiastes, go read it again. But um, again, read those last few verses because uh, those are key. Uh, we love you guys and um, yeah, have a wonderful day.